All right, so here we are. We're in Matthew chapter 15. How you, how, we just moving right along, huh? Matthew chapter 15, it's been wild. We've had walking on water. We've had thousands fed. We've had all kinds of stuff. And then we got people who recognized Jesus and came to him and touched his garment and were healed. It's just phenomenal. You just stick with Jesus and it just, it's just never boring. And if you come back to this in 10 years, you know this verse? It'll still challenge you. It'll still drive you crazy. It'll still pull you further up and farther in and bless you like crazy. That's what I meant to say. Drive you like crazy to something good. Anyway, we're in Matthew chapter 15 today, verse 1, and it is an interesting uh, thing, uh, what goes on now. We're going to read 12 verses, so strap yourself in and let's go. Then some Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said... Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. And he answered and said to them, Why do you yourselves transgress the commandment of God for the sake of your traditions? For God said, Honor your father and mother, and he who speaks evil of father or mother is to be put to death. How do you like that? The place would be empty, I think. But you say, whoever says to his father or mother, whatever I have that would help you has been given to God. He is not not to honor his father or his mother, and by this you invalidated the word of God for the sake of your tradition. You hypocrites, rightly did Isaiah prophesy of you, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men. After Jesus called the crowd to him, he said to them, Hear and understand. It is not what enters into the mouth that defiles the man, but what proceeds out of the mouth that defiles the man. Then the disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this statement? Go figure that one. I am sure this is probably one of those sections of Scripture that we talk about around here as those verses that we just turn the page. You know, teaching the precepts, doctrines of man as the precepts or doctrines of God, saying this is what God wants and not being true. It's a dangerous tradition. It's a dangerous practice. And the Pharisees coming at the end of a healing service where everyone was cured to ask this question, why are you disobedient? It's an interesting uh, feeling you get about Pharisees. And I think almost all of us see this incorrectly. Uh, They traveled a great distance from Jerusalem to be in Galilee at this time to ask this question. And they asked, what they asked was, why do your disciples not practice the washing rules? Before you eat bread, you have to wash your hands so that you touch the bread and you put it in your mouth and you make yourself unclean because your hands are unclean. You make the bread unclean, you eat it, and ooh, you know, kind of thing. In a world where they didn't have disinfectants and probably had way fewer colds and flus and all that stuff because they... Didn't, couldn't clean that much. So they practiced these things, and it's in Leviticus. It's somewhere around the first third of Leviticus, like 11 or 10 or 9 or something like that, where they talk about the washing of hands to eat. And, it was, and these guys, these Pharisees, over some centuries had made it 11 volumes of explanation of what it meant, and it was all about even holding the hands this way so that you wouldn't, the dirt wouldn't run back, you know. It would run off. I mean, there's so many different precepts. And they come, they come honestly because there is, their religion is very deep. And even if they are sincere, which it does not seem that they are sincere since he called them hypocrites, um, but they could be sincere and hypocritical probably just by tradition. They are, they are very much in traditions. And it's interesting that they ask him, why do you not follow the traditions? Your disciples not. And he asks, why do you not follow God? Theirs is the tradition of the elders. His is why do you disobey God? And what it is is truly to this, the difference of two religions, really. It is the two doctrines, two ideas 
of all of them being Jewish men, all of them wanting to do right, everybody having some form of religion that says, I want to do right. The Pharisees become Pharisees for many reasons, and they are born into a caste which allows them to become it, and then in that caste, they rise to the top, and our Pharisees and, and scribes and elders and educated, whereas these other guys are fishermen and builders. Thomas is a builder. Jesus comes from a builder, um, a carpenter, and tax collectors and sinners and people these Pharisees think are dirty. And so you have two groups, and they come a long way to ask this question, why don't you do this? Jesus ends with offensive statement to them. It's not what goes in that defiles you, it's what come out. So I want to know what's, uh, what's defile mean. And really, it goes right back to unclean. All it means is unclean. Defi you defile by being unclean. They're saying, why do you eat bread unclean? And he's telling them, your uncleanness comes from these precepts and laws that ignore God. And he tells them the example of, in, in some verses it says, some translation says, you just declare it Corban. And Corban, the declaration of Corban is it belongs to God. Jesus is teaching them they belong to God. They are Corban. These guys are teaching possessions are Corban. And so here you are as a child who grows up to be a man and you have success and the law they claim to follow says all their success belongs to their parents. Unless they just call it Corban then they get to live in the affluence and have the robes and the tassels and the, the, the temple gets it, but they live by the temple. So the food provided to the temple is what was declared Corban. So they can, re, they can let their parents live in poverty and declare it Corban, and that's what Jesus is questioning. Do you understand that? Does it make sense? Am I boring you? Anything like that? I mean, just he's pointing out to them that they've got this philosophy that rejects their own parents against God's law that says everything they succeed at. So all the robbing they do in the temple, all the money changing, all the selling of imperfect sheep as perfect sheep and all that stuff, all the transfer of wealth that they do in the temple, they keep, and he's saying you're supposed to, it's supposed to belong to your parents. So they, they, he calls them hypocrites. And really what it is is just two ideas. They're trying to see are you the one? And he doesn't give them that answer. He simply points out, you're not the one. What you believe is not right. And so really your question doesn't have much sense because you are so wrong, you are coming from a position of not even being able to ask about what's right. And we kind of come to the point, do you know they were offended by that? By you telling the truth about them? Today, I, I wonder how this relates to us, and I, and I know how it relates to me. Uh, each one of you have to decide. Because we no longer were born and raised into a religious system. The, we're not all Jewish men born in a Jewish state that's been conquered by a heathen nation, nor are we living under one law, really. We all, we, we all decide what's good and right and what's bad and evil. We each one live according to what we think is good. We pursue what we think we want. We live by what will, what will satisfy me almost. I mean, I don't care how dedicated you are to the Lord. You can't deny that you live by what you want. So therefore, we trade, we take God's clear truth, the things he says that can't be denied, and we skew them to fit us. Yes, I can do these things because grace is so big. Yes, I can do these things because all that I have belongs to him. Yes, I can do these things. And if these things I'm talking about, I don't want to say specifics because I'll offend you the way he offended them. But they're clear. They're real clear. People want to take this very verse. It's not what goes into a man that defiles them to say they can put anything. doesn't matter if I take drugs. That doesn't defile me. doesn't matter what I drink, what I eat, what I do, how I live. That can't defile me. It's what I say that defiles me, so I just don't say nothing. 
they forget or they ignore the verse that I would say to prove that that's wrong. I would say, he who denies me before men, I will deny them before my Father who's in heaven. He who confesses me before men, I will confess him before my Father in heaven. And what does he mean by that? He who confesses my truth, he confesses that I am the truth. He who confesses my way, who confesses that I am the way. He who confesses it both with his mouth and his actions, his lifestyle. It's so clear, it cannot be denied, but we can just turn it a little. And we can say, grace is so big, therefore I can do anything. I'm not, it doesn't matter what I do. A few years ago, a guy started telling crowds of people, God is not mad at you. First time I heard it, I was sitting in a pretty large crowd, and I thought, oh my goodness. Let me just tell you, out of that crowd, I know of three guys publicly confessed, left their churches, destroyed their people because of the actions they were doing on that day that he said that. It's just that nobody knew it on that day. One guy everybody really cried over because he left a note saying, don't judge the message because the messenger is so faulted. And the truth is, the message is always judged by the faulted messenger. All of you have been hurt in church. All of you have been hurt by Christians. Every one of us have been wounded by somebody who said they believe. And I don't mean you just disagreed with them. They said you were a sinner when you were sinning and that hurt your feelings. I'm not saying that. If they say you're a sinner when you're sinning and it hurts your feelings, it really is called conviction and it should cause you to come back to the Lord. They're not wrong to do that. But within church, there have been so much hypocrisy. Men saying you should do something while they were doing the opposite. Men saying you shouldn't do something while they were doing it. You follow me? Again, I'm trying really hard not to say specifics. But I remember somebody trying to hire me once as a contractor while they complained about every contractor that ever lived. They had no problem with the prices that I was talking about, and I was kind of adding a little bit for the grief of how harsh they are with contractors. I was actually trying to bid it to not get it, because... And I couldn't shake her free from me. I couldn't keep her from wanting me till I finally wrote her a letter and said, I am just so sorry. I, it appears to me, and I have to tell you, that I'll just be the next contractor to let you down. And I really am too busy to take this on. And I had to say no. Because they're, you're just, I can't go into this. And I, and I look at that and I think I'm just, oftentimes I'm just going to be the next pastor that's going to hurt you. Because the truth doesn't matter. It's do I say it in the way that's skewed towards you, and I'm not going to. Do I let you speak because you're anointed? Do I let your anointing come forward? And I have to tell you, I believe that what Jesus is talking in this book about is not anointing, but character. I believe what he's teaching is quality of conviction. And so, we are the church of the quality of character and conviction. And then the anointing that comes with that, the anointing we live in, we celebrate that too, but that's an ornament hung on our tree. It's not the thing. It's not what we look for. We look for character, and we look for conviction, and we look for the deliverance of our life into the throne room of God. We look for the pursuit of holiness, character. Jesus was pointing out they had no character. They did everything how it worked for them. Since they were chosen to be in this caste that could become a priest or an elder, and they became it, so they made it to the top of their caste. They're, and if you don't know what a caste is, it's a social order that you're born into. We don't have much of that here other than, other than we do, I guess. But <laughs> I mean, it's pretty clear we're not going to be president, are we? Because we're not, we weren't born in the right place. That's kind of a caste system, but they have an actual caste system where if you're not of this bloodline, you can't be a priest. So they were lucky enough to be born there, and then they were lucky enough to do all these things to get to here. And Jesus has got a bunch of fishermen that he tells them, I'm going to make you fisher of men. And then he tells them, I'm going to wash your feet. And Peter says, don't wash my feet, wash my whole body. He says, if your whole body needs cleaning, you need more than what I've got for you. 
That's not what we're talking about. We're not going back to this pharisaical way of washing your hands. We're not talking about that. Yes. Not washing your feet like you wash your hands to obey some law, Peter. Yes. I'm washing your feet to show you that I'm willing to serve you. And the new order of religion is not like this system where they become gods. They stand on corners and thank God that they're priests and thank God that they're men and thank God that they're not them guys and them guys. He called them sinners and women is what he called them. I thank God I wasn't born a woman, he said, they used to say. Yeah. So he's teaching them. It's not like that. It's not like that. I'm teaching you that if you become a leader in this, this ideal, you become a servant. And a servant is going to have to tell people that's wrong. That's hypocritical. This is what's right. This is the way, walk in it. You're going that way. You need to turn around and go that way. Right. And then people are going to hate you the same way they hate him. They're going to decide that you're offensive just like they decided he's offensive. And he didn't do anything more than tell them the truth. My greatest fear is I say something's the truth that's not the truth. I will give answer for that. You will give answer for that. Right. If I say something is not the truth, that is the truth. If I say something that is the truth, that I say it is the truth. Fear and trembling. If I say to you, God's not mad at any of you. I have no idea what you do in private. I guarantee you, he could be mad at you. Most of you, he's not mad at you, I promise. Because you are real, you're true in your confession of your sins. Right. Paul the Apostle said, if you sin doing something you want to do and try to, make, try to skew the gospel to allow you to do that, there is no forgiveness for that. There is no confession for this sin. He says it in Romans. But if you do the sin that you don't want to do and there is remorse in it, there's always forgiveness. John the Apostle said, if we sin, not when we sin, but if we sin, right. he is faithful and just. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. The blood of Jesus washes us and cleanses us from every unrighteousness. Jesus said, I am the truth. That's why I keep my message simple. Some people call it the milk. I call it the meat. So you got to decide which you want. I trust you, Jesus. Trust me, Jesus is the meat. You can try to follow Jesus and you are going to be challenged every day of your life. You take that little message and you just turn it to where it's nothing matters. It doesn't matter what you do. You say you believe you're good. Done deal? It's a super easy life. You just do whatever you want. Feel whatever you want. Get whatever you want. Be mad at who you want. Hate who you want. Love, love those that love you. Give to those who give to you. Make it all work for you. Just turn it again. Make it click to your satisfaction. Teaching the precepts of men. Say they're the doctrines of God. That's what they were doing. It was the Convergence in this conversation of these two ideas come together so that you could see one is truth and one is not. One is hypocrisy and one is the savior of the world. Come to the earth as a man to be questioned by people who think they know better. We don't have that today. I'm so glad, aren't you? People questioning the truth of Jesus Christ. We don't have that anymore, right? Aren't you glad you get up and you live in this stream that's all going the same way? There's nothing to go against. Is that sarcasm? Is that right? Was that sarcasm? Yeah, sometimes I don't recognize it. <sighs> Truth is, we do have that. We have it in so many forms. You look back in history and you see where these ideas came from. There are several ideas that I fear bringing up. I would say the most common one today that just breaks my heart. When it came out, it was so rejected by all, all believers. There are <laughs> books written saying how this could never be accepted by people who read the Bible. And today... There are very few people who don't believe it. It's called once saved, always saved. 
If you go back and read the writings of that time, this is the most ludicrous thing ever put out as an idea. Today, it is hard to find people who don't believe it. You just take the truth and... Jesus said, any branch in me that does not bear fruit, I will cut off and throw in a fire. Every time I'm asked about this doctrine, I just say, what about that? What about every branch is cut off and they'll throw in a fire? Every branch in me, Jesus says. What about it? Well, what about this verse, they say. No, 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 time out. Let's just explain this. Ten, ten virgin bridesmaids waiting to go into a wedding. Five go in, five don't. Five go in because they kept their lamp. They did something. They kept their lamp full. Five don't go in because they let their lamp go empty. Can you explain it? The kingdom of heaven is like. We never get there. We never get an answer to it because it's always, well, what about this? No, no, just what about this? I'll answer that later. What about this? You go back to the beginning of this idea when someone said, let's just take the truth that you need to live your life in faith every day. What about the truth that says he who overcomes to the end will be saved? Thirteen times it says it. He who overcomes to the end will be saved. Paul the Apostle said you must run the race to completion. On the day of his death, he even wrote, or the week of his death, we don't know it was the day, but... As he was waiting for the executioner, I have run the race to the finish, he says. I have made it. He says, I have done all these things that I might attain to the resurrection, not that I have attained it. We just take the truth of his truth, the truth of the gospel as understood by Paul and Peter and John, and we just take it. I don't like what they say. Works. We get to do anything we want, believe anything we want. I stand before the Lord today, fear and trembling, that I offend you and you go away from the truth. I don't want that. I want you to hear the truth and receive it. If the Lord said I was a hypocrite, if Jesus, who just walked on water, healed everybody, fed thousands, has healed the blind already in this country, has risen the, from the dead, people from the dead already. The word has spread everywhere. Look on the map, it's this little dot of a nation, man. A little dot of a nation. Word spread everywhere of his renown. And he said, you're a hypocrite. I'd be on my knees crying out to God to forgive me for being a hypocrite and teaching anybody wrong stuff. These guys, what was the last words? You know they were offended, right? God's truth offends you. I am so sorry for you. I'm not really sorry that I have to tell the truth. I'm sorry for you that his truth offends you. But it, a lot of things that we're calling okay today just isn't okay. Right. A lot of things we're saying today just isn't okay. Right. And I handle the word of truth with fear and trembling. Right. I really do. Someone says, I don't want to go to the Father's house because I'm not sure I want to be convicted every time I come to church. I, I personally want to be convicted every time I open that book. I want to be purified. I want those lines to be brought in. I just want all those rough edges chipped off. I want all those wrongs righted. I want to be right before the Lord. And if something in me is wrong because I let somebody tell me something that was foolish but became truth in our world. See, I don't think we're listening. I think we daydream in and out. I one time had some real true believers, people that I thought really highly of, really believed the word. They were word, they're actually words, they were rhema. They're preaching the word. Come to me and they said they found this guy and he was so awesome and they just, oh my gosh, he's so awesome. And I just said, well, would you do me a favor with your notes? Write for me a separate note for every time he, he talks about Jesus. Okay, we will, they said. They had already bought in, man. They were going with this guy. They were already sending him offerings in the mail. They were all in. They took their, they sat down in front of their TV, turned on his broadcast every day. It was every day broadcast too, by the way. 
And they had their pen ready because they're going to show me. Two months later, they come back to me, you ruined it for us. <laughs> How could I ruin it for you? I just said, simply write down the references to Jesus. All of his truths about what's right and what's wrong. How do you get there without Jesus? He's the way, the truth, and the life, and no man gets to the Father unless they go through him. His name is the only name under heaven by which men can be saved. And every knee will bow and every tongue confess that he is the Lord. And how do you preach two months without mentioning him? And then claim you're leading people to truth. So we need to be reading Jesus. I say it all the time. What I, didn't I say it last Sunday? Read, was it Sunday, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? I'm telling you, eat it. He said he's the bread of life. How do you have life without eating his bread? The living water comes from proclaiming him to be the truth. How do you survive without living water? If it's a spiritual life, it's spiritual holiness, spiritual right. life that we want. I want eternal life. How do I have life if I don't drink his Living water, his truth. I don't eat his bread. He called it crazy stuff. He said, you got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. <laughs> I don't know about that one. They, they left him for saying that. I fell on my knees and said, I don't know if I'm eating your body. I don't know if I'm drinking your blood. He began to show me that all that meant was becoming like him. You are what you eat, he said to me. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's a shame because of what I eat, you know. <laughs> but he wasn't talking about McDonald's and Burger King. He was talking about, or pizza. He was talking about you are what you eat in the truth, in the spirit. If you eat Jesus, you'll become Jesus in this world. You'll try to go out there and be rude. You'll try to go out there and be defensive. You'll try to be offended. And it will always come to conviction. I want him to change me. I want him to transform me. I want you to tell me the truth. What good is it if you butter me up all the time? Oh, pastor this and pastor that. You know, the people that call me pastor the most usually are phonies every time I mean, my wife goes that guy out there saying pastor every five seconds i go i know <laughs> it's driving me crazy just call me steve dude but if you want to call me pastor i'm good I'm, I, I'm not it doesn't okay just do it but i have found just kind of like marking it down yes he was living a phony secret life and ended up not following jesus so what good did it do that he called me pastor I have a few people in the room, and a lot, I mean lots of few, that don't ever call me Pastor Steve. They just, you know, and they're true. I like that. I like true better than false, and I don't care what you call me. Do you understand? Yeah. You can call me Pastor. Don't, you don't have to stop. And you don't have to if you don't want to. But it'd be way better if you made me your pastor. Let me lead you into, sh let me lead you like the shepherd leads the sheep, than that you called me anything. Or that you ever made dinner for me or ever gave me a chief seat. None of that matters. I may never wash your feet either. You follow me? But I will submit my life to you. Because there's these truths, these converging truths that show up in this story. Are you following me? They don't go together. They don't work together. A rose by any other name in this case is not a rose. A rose by any other name is definitely still a rose. You don't change it. But the name of Jesus Christ and the belief in him, the spiritual truths are not the same no matter what you believe. It's only one truth. There's only one way, and it's narrow. Few find it, and it leads to life, and we're supposed to strive to enter by the narrow door that's at the end of the way. We're supposed to overcome to the end, persevere to the end. Live to the end with all our hearts, minds, souls, and strength. That's, right. That's what we're supposed to do. And there are no verses that contradict that. Someone said to me, there is no correction in love. Was that the word? Discipline. There is no discipline in love. And I said, if you don't have discipline, you don't have love. If there is no discipline, there is no love. Because God is love and he chastises those he loves. 
You can t- try to make that truth work, but it just, it's, it's going to be the convergence of ideas, one that destroys and makes hypocrisy and one that doesn't and gives life. What you believe matters. That's why we study. That's why we do this every week where we sit here and listen. It says I speak 35 minutes. I barely ever speak 35 minutes because I know our attention span is about 15. Those that want to hear me and listen the whole time, they're already studying. I'm hoping to get one more each service that'll listen. That'll just say, hey, that's, that helps my life. Are you with me? I know that we, all of us, have had so many things said to us. Around here on our team, in our, in our community, we're so quick to come and talk about negativity because it spreads so fast and creates these kinds of diversions, these kinds of afflictions. We try to... We try to Keep that out. And you can't keep it out. I don't want to lose the fact that so many of us have been so betrayed by knowledge and negativity and things that are not based on truth. They are based on want. They are based on feeling. They are based on flesh. They are based on me, me, me. The whole world's become me, me, me. What's in it? What, what, what's for me? Require nothing of me. Give me everything. And I know we've all been... We, the whole TV... TV world, computer world, Netflix world is just really coming at us to tell us wrong is right and right is wrong. And Jesus is still preaching truth. God is still on the throne. Prayer still changes things. And he is good. And he loves us and has provided a way for us to live in his goodness. But I ask the Lord every day of my life, or I, maybe I haven't so much every day anymore, but I ask the Lord often and continually, heal my wrong thinking. Teach me your ways. Send me and I'll go. Call me and I'll come. My life is yours. And that's what I want for me. And that's what I want to draw at least one more of you into. At least two more. I want to draw you all into it. Just the truth of Jesus Christ. That you not so much listen to me, but that you listen to him. Allow him to change you, mold you. Tell you what's wrong and tell you what's right. That you would repent for what's wrong, you would embrace what's right. Holy Spirit, I ask that you bring conviction where conviction is needed, encouragement where encouragement is needed, correction where correction is needed. Do you dare to volunteer for that, to allow him to do that in you? Change my heart, O God. Would you allow him to change your heart? I will. Let me be the first to raise my hand. I will, Lord. Allow you to change me. What is impure, I pray you help me be pure. Just raise your hand. My eyes are closed. I don't care if you raise your hand or don't, but I I would encourage you to let him convict you. And I raise my hand to you, Lord. Just raise your hand. If you're willing to submit yourself to his truth, would you repeat after me? I will believe whatever you want me to believe. I will reject what I shouldn't believe. I ask you to forgive me for the things I have done that did not bring honor to your truth. And I ask you to forgive me for the things I did not do that would have brought honor to your truth. I ask you to forgive me for the things I have said that have dishonored your truth. And I ask you to forgive me for the things I should have said to bring honor to your truth. I ask you to forgive me for the things I think that dishonor your truth. 
You know, there's way fewer people praying than there was a minute ago. Don't grow weary in this. You can put your hand down, but let your heart remain up. Let your hand stay up during your, with your heart if that's what you need. Lord, I ask you to forgive me for the things I should have thought that I did not think that should have brought honor to your truth. I ask you to heal my wrong thinking. Teach me your ways that I might honor you every day of my life. I pray these things in Jesus' name. And I bow my knee now to call you, you Jesus Christ, my Lord. And I give my life to you again today to be your servant. <laughs> oh, set me free, Lord Jesus, from my wrong thinking. Can you say amen?